Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We are down in Georgetown, going towards Cleveland, Tennessee today. We are at the Blessing of the Buffalo, and we're gonna take you into this beautiful place and to show you all the sights and sounds of this yearly event that happens here in Southeast Tennessee. We hope that you put it on your calendar. It's a beautiful day here. Fall is in the air. Sweatshirts are on, we're ready to go. Let's go see what all the festivities are about. I know there's some folks still in line. There's still plenty of food, so uh, enjoy yourself. We're going to start with a little bit of more music and storytelling in a few minutes. But just before we get started, uh, Larry Rose and the folks at the John Ra Ross home down in Rossville have been friends of mine for many years. And Larry's here today to present something to the farm because of the connection with our Native American story and John Ross. And so, Larry, I'm going to let you come up here just before we get started and make your presentation. I think this really is a good, good thing for you for maybe the farm here. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful. Hey, hi, So the indigenous peoples that went and joined the military to help fight for this great country, they were pushed to the side because they were indigenous. And so um, out of necessity, they had to seek out other indigenous people. So let's say that a Cherokee man served with a Navajo man in the same company. They would have hung out with each other because one, their commonality of being indigenous, two, would be the commonality of their upbringing, and uh, they wanted to survive. You need friends in war to help you to make it. So uh, they would watch each other's back, take care of each other, and uh, when they came home from having to do this, this hard job, the Navajo man would take that Cherokee man all the way to Navajo country and uh, introduce him to his family. He would tell them, hey, look at this man as my brother. We have spilt blood together. We have helped each other. And now he is my brother. So treat him as you would you would treat me. And in return, that Cherokee man would bring that Navajo man out here to Cherokee country. And he would introduce him to his family as well. This is my brother now. I have saved his life. He has saved my life. Treat him as you would treat our family. He is our family. So to keep our warriors from having to travel all of these great distances. They say that uh, everybody got together and welcomed all of the warriors home at the same time. And they also, they, they still have a uh, group of, of uh, dancers. Some of them are veterans that go and meet the ships, the airplanes, the, the warriors that return home from every engagement all across the world and they will welcome them home with song and dance. And that, that's the reason why at the powwow, the veterans are the first to come in. 
because of their sacrifice, because of the hard job that they had to do to protect all of us. And uh, indigenous peoples have taken part in every major conflict that the United States has ever fought. So we really honor our veterans when we have powwows. Now, traditionally, if you were going into battle, you would not be wearing deer toes or bells around your ankles. Those were added for the contest at the powwows. People come from all over to compete at the powwows for top prize money. So they need those bells to stand out to the judges. It lets the judges know if they stop on time with the drum, if they're movement of their feet is on time with the drum. So that just aids the judges to, to know how the dancer is doing. For our men's northern traditional dancer as he gives to you his style of dance. 